when I first um, got the message of uh, Coach Parker's passing, there was many different types of emotions kind of that you, that you go through. I think everybody uh, goes through that, that process. But if it was uh, like Chad, if it was one word that I kind of can sum it all up, uh, that one word would be unfortunate. You see, see, it's unfortunate that not everybody got an opportunity uh, to experience life with a great human being like Coach Parker. See, it's unfortunate that we could never again duplicate his personality, his dedication, his spirit, and his toughness. You see, it's unfortunate that out of millions of millions of kids like myself who set out to play football uh, on a big stage, never get the opportunity to be really taught by a legend like Coach Parker. And, and the first thing I always think about when I think about Norm uh, and his family is Jeffrey, just the special relationship they had, how kind he was to uh, share Jeffrey with our football program, our team. And, uh, you know, I just go back to that first spring. Jeffrey was a draft nick. You know, he had uh, a, a thick notebook. We recorded every guy that got drafted for I don't know how many years back. And uh, the draft that year was the first uh, same day as our spring game. So Norm was getting ready to get in the car and uh, said, hey, Jeff, let's go. We're going over to the spring game. Jeff said, no, I'm not going. He said, you got to go. It's the spring game. Jeff said, no, I'm, I'm not going. Today's the NFL draft. And Norm looked at him and said, hey, you can tape the draft. Watch it later. We're going to the game. He says, no, you tape the draft. I'm watching. Or you can tape the game. I'm staying for the game. And... Uh, Jeff was pretty smart. We weren't very good back then, so it was a good move on his part for sure. Uh, he was so proud of his kids, so proud of his uh, grandchildren, certainly, and we're so fortunate to have Tyler and Alyssa working with us now. They're doing a great job with us. And certainly his relationship with Linda was, I think, ex extra special. And, and to me, it's, uh, you know, it's all about a partnership. It's all about the uh, love that they've established through real-life experiences, both good and bad. And that's uh, something that's just... It takes time to earn that, and uh, I'll tell you, they just had a tremendous relationship. Sometimes you thought you were watching a Honeymooners episode. It was pretty entertaining, but uh, that, that didn't happen by chance. Uh, it was heading into my junior year, and I had just gotten married, um, which is pretty crazy. Now i got kids. I'm like, I was like 20 years old. What was I thinking? <laughs> you know? But um, head into his office, knock on the door, and I can still see the mental picture. Um, you know, there he is sitting behind his desk, uh, dipping the lip, glasses down, watching film in that Iowa gear, right? And, um, <laughs> camp, come on in, you know? And because he did, he always had time. As someone said, you know, he always had time for you. You know, always had time for you. And we sit down and we're talking about, I don't know, whatever, football and the team and things like that. And um, we got talking about marriage. Uh, probably because I had just gotten married and, and um, he says, all right, you want to know the secret? You want to know the secret to having a good, successful marriage? And I thought, yeah, sure, tell me. I really want to know. So I kind of leaned forward and he says, all right, here it is. You ready? You ready? And he, and he says, always say, yes, ma'am, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and that was him, you know what I mean? Yes, dear. Whatever you need. Um, and he would get you laughing, you know. But then he got serious. And, and he started to tell me, um, he said, you know, really, the key to life, and he said the key to uh, marriage is all about becoming more unselfish. He said that's the key. And he said, you know, when you get married, you realize you're selfish, you know, because you don't squeeze the toothpaste up the way that your wife does. Or you like to have the toilet paper go down this way, and she likes to pull from underneath, right? <laughs> right? Funny stuff like that. But he said, that's the key. You learn how to get that figured out with your, with your wife. And then you have a kid, and you have to start all over. Right? And then you have another kid, and he went through all these experiences in life that he had learned, um, that he shared with me about, where he had learned to become more and more unselfish. And as we laughed about that, um, you know, it got to be something where I started to say, you know what? That's pretty profound, and that still stays with me today. Uh, there's one story I can I can talk about, which is a, the biggest learning, one of the biggest learning lessons I had in college. Sophomore year, we had just played, I uh, was just a new, fairly new starter. We played over at Ohio State and, and took the loss, and defensively played pretty good, but of course, Brian Ferentz and his offense couldn't score enough points that day. Um, <laughs> so, the, you know, as a new, I was a new, uh, 
sort of new to the media thing and kind of getting to know how that worked. Well, I walked right into this this uh, reporter's question. He said, well, the defense played really good today. Do you think he could have done anything else uh, to win the game? I was like, oh, no, you know, just being a dumb sophomore. I was like, no, you know, I think we played as good as we could have played. We did all we could, just didn't get the win. And I didn't realize I was going to pay for that the next day because obviously it's a Sunday after a game, especially a loss. It's the worst day of the week for any player. Uh, now it's just Monday for me. Um, but... That Sunday, I'll never forget, um, we come in, the first 10 minutes of the meeting, the defensive meeting, was every play that was a negative play that I had personally. <laughs> missed tackle, missed opportunity, missed assignment, um, in front of everybody. Now, there's not a more humbling experience than to do that in front of your peers, the guys you worked with your whole whole year in the weight room and everything else. And and I got the point right away, but he had to tell me just to make sure I understood it. And, um, you know, it's never about you. You can always do more. It's never about one guy on a team. It's about what we can all do and accomplish together. And he was so true, and I still will never forget that moment, of course, in my life. I, I do want to uh, uh, mention this. You know, my last name is Parker. Uh, there's no relation to me and Norm. And I'm saying that in regards to Norm, because he's very happy that I'm not related to him. <laughs> okay. But honestly, it would be a great honor. Uh, I've been on the road many times when I have a guy walk up to me and say, how's your dad doing? And a couple of times, you know, my dad passed away a couple of years ago, so I didn't know what one they were asking about, so I just kind of like waited a little bit and then answered the question, oh, he's doing good. He's back in there. He's grinding at the office, you know. But uh, Norm was special to me. There was always a time, again, after that Sunday, after a game, when we had to watch that film, and Norm, you'd, sometimes you'd sit there and you'd be waiting to get yelled at on a play, and the tape would keep running. He'd keep running. You wouldn't know what was going on until you heard the... <sighs> <laughs> now, it's long, it's a late season, long, long hour, so Abdul and I and Mike and everybody else would sit there, and we would just be as quiet as we could be. <laughs> Lord, don't let him wake up. <laughs> And we just see how many plays we get through, and then he would never remember where he was, so we get to skip those plays. You hope your bad play was during that time, of course. But you could imagine a group of college kids being quieter than we were at that point. And then the normisms you talked about. Uh, my favorite one, just because it related to me after when I went to the pros, I played in a cover two system in Minnesota for eight years. And the saying on the back, I think it's on the back of your program, there's three fastest ways to die, electricity, natural gas, and cover two. So I came back from, you know, the first time I came back when I got drafted, and he's like, I don't know how you guys are ever going to win a game. <laughs> and I still think it's amazing that we ever won any. Well, Coach Parker, toughness is, is not non-negotiable. In order to play on his defense, toughness is a, a prerequisite. So you have to be mental, mentally and physically tough to succeed in anything in life. And in order to play on Coach Parker's defense, and I've seen it time and time again, you don't have to be the fastest you don't have to jump the highest. You don't even have to be the smartest one in a bunch. But toughness, you have, must have. See, most would say, if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But if coach was here today, he will say, just start, just start rolling. <laughs> you can't crawl, just start rolling. <laughs> See, life is a privilege. And we get to play football. We get to be parents. Uh, we get to be coaches. We get an opportunity at life. And I think that's what Coach Parker understood. And that whatever opportunity you have, we have, to, we have a personal um, responsibility to maximize that opportunity. The second lesson that I learned on the Coach Parker that I'd like to share is that our uh, in order to be successful in life, you got to be a little bit crazy. Because definition of crazy, as we know, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting, you know, different results. But I'll be darned if coach called under 8-3 every single play for at least, you know, three of our years that I was here at Iowa. And it worked, you know, it worked. But I think what people fail to realize is that coach had more trust in the guys that were on the field than he did in the actual play. Um, we're just going to bring it in here for a little brotherhood and fellowship. That's one thing Norm would always say. We'd come into meetings, say, bring it on in here, a little brotherhood and fellowship. Can't get any better than this. You know? And it just make you laugh every time. 
Uh, and the last person walking in the in the room, he made sure that you knew you were the last person. Million dollars waiting on the dime. Here we go. Uh, but I once, once read a book, my guy, a professor at Carnegie Mellon, he wrote a book. Uh, he, uh, he actually was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, Randy Pouch his name. He wrote, the book's called uh, The Last Lecture. And um, the tradition at, uh, at Carnegie Mellon is, is every time a professor gives their last speech, it's open, the class is open up to the, to the uh, entire campus. Anybody can come. Well, I, I kind of got to thinking, like, what, what would Norm's last speech be? What would his last lesson be? You know, so I kind of compiled some of his normisms and some of the things he always said. And, um, you know, he was managed of not very many words, uh, but they, met, they left a, a lasting impression. And, uh, and they had a lot of meaning behind them. But anyway, chapter one would, would be something like, like uh, D-line. Don't be dancing bears out there. Move your hands, move your feet. And don't peek into the backfield like turkeys because you get your head whacked and get knocked out of your butt. <laughs> Linebackers, you got to jam the guy. Uh, DBs, don't get burned deep. Whatever you do, don't get burned deep. Uh, and then as a defense, as a team, we all got to know our stance, alignment, key, responsibility, and our technique. Um, and just remember that how do we stop this screen? How do we stop this reverse? Well, teams stop screens. Teams stop reverses. Uh, the three fastest ways to die, as uh, Chad mentioned, natural gas, electricity, and cover two. Um, that's why, as Abdul said, we stuck to eight, under eight lock quite a bit. Uh, but, it, but again, it worked. And we must tackle, tackle, tackle. Every time, uh, you know, I don't see, I've never seen a defense that's, that's been good or worth a, worth a darn if they didn't know how to tackle. So every day, we're going to work on our tackling. We've got to be able to tackle. That's the name of the game on defense. Uh, and then, and then in practice, he'd have those those things that he was looking for. You know, you got 11 different guys out there, you know, each one with their own responsibility. And there was that one thing he was always keying on, whether it was team period or, or whatever period it was. And, and if that thing wasn't right, run it again. You know, so you always got a lot of that, uh, which was great because he made he made you perfect what um, you know what it took to to win that game. Um, and then <laughs> I can remember uh, watching watching film. Uh, you know, so we're out there. Uh, we're out there playing, guys. We're out there to play football. We're not out there to, to be cheerleaders and pump up the crowd. That's not what we're there to do. So let's leave the cheerleading to the cheerleaders. <laughs> and remember, if you can't figure all this out, uh, the old line's the bottom of the food chain. So <laughs> if you're linebacker and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to move to D line. And if you can't get it out down at D line, you're moving to offense. So keep that in mind. We got a bid to play the Orange Bowl against Georgia Tech. We ran a very unique offense and a very tough offense to prepare for. And I don't remember about mid-December, uh, a couple days after we got the bid, walking by his office, and he called me in and held up an old Manel folder and uh, said, you know, this is exactly like the offense so-and-so ran against him in Minnesota, 1977. But he had, he had that twinkle in his eyes, which he had a lot, and uh, usually it was after a game, but he had it that day. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty good indication that they were in for a tough game, and they certainly were. They... Uh, Ended up with 155 yards, got one touchdown, and he to this day would tell you that never should have happened. So it was just an unbelievable performance and kind of kind of a crowning blow for well, him. Always taught me from that point on is in, in the coaching. Okay, yeah, you got to be tough. You got to be able to be a hustle. Okay, but you got to be a smart football player. So I kind of took that with me the whole way. If you're not smart, it's hard to get on the field. And with Norm, you know, knowing that, that sticks with me today. You know, if you can't go and execute what we're asking you to do, then we can't play you. And, and to me, he's brought me a long way. You know, as a player, you know, he's been a great mentor. He's been a, you know, a coach for me. Uh, and to me, you know, he's, you know, I do have two dads. You know, and I appreciate that, everything Norm has done for me.